great to uh, to be able to address uh, the Business Green Net Zero Festival uh, this year. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, be with you, albeit uh, virtually. It's a shame we're not here uh, in person. Um, but what I want to do is uh, talk a little bit about how agriculture and food production uh, can be a real integral part of the solution to get us to net zero. Too often agriculture uh, is painted as uh, part of the problem uh, of climate change, whereas I fundamentally believe uh, we're at the forefront of being part of the solution. And also there'd be very few other industries uh, who are not uh, in the face of climate change more than agriculture. Uh, with the weather conditions we've had this year, uh, we've had droughts, we've had floods, we've had high temperatures, we have extreme low temperatures, uh, and we in farming have had to deal with that. Uh, so that's why quite often uh, we probably get reminded more than anyone of those impacts of climate change. But I'm here to tell you a little bit about how I feel uh, we can be part of the solution. So I'm Stuart Roberts, Deputy President of the National Farmers Union, but I'm also a farmer in Hertfordshire. I'm here 24 miles north of Marble Arch. Uh, we're predominantly cereal producers, uh, but we've also got some livestock. We've got some beef cattle. Uh, we've got some sheep who unfortunately you may occasionally be able to hear behind me here. Uh, and we've also got a few laying hens as well, uh, producing legs, uh, eggs for the local market. Um, one of the things about agriculture, and we often forget this, is we are the foundation of the food industry, an industry that's worth about £120 billion. Uh, and about a year ago now, we started getting very serious about net zero. Our president, Manette Batters, set an aspiration for our industry to get there by 2040. But interestingly, agriculture for me is not just about how we reduce uh, our carbon footprint, because actually we're not just producers of carbon, we're also able to act as a sink for carbon. And there's not many other industries that are able to do that. So this clover grown behind me here is not only producing lamb, uh, but it's also putting nitrogen into the soil, which I need for my cereals, but it's also sequestering carbon. And I wanna talk a little bit about that as we go forward. But one of the things that's most important, particularly on this farm and every farm around the country, is trying to hit that sweet spot of where productivity improvements also lead to net zero. By becoming more efficient, by utilising resources better, we're able to reduce our footprint, reduce our impact on the planet, and also improve our profitability, which is something we shouldn't be frightened of. So what have I done on this farm uh, in the last couple of years to improve my productivity? Well, first of all, I've introduced more livestock into our rotation. It enables me to utilize my grassland better. That grassland, which is a great uh, carbon sink, it sequesters carbon. It also produces some fantastic nutritious uh, meat, uh, something we're very, very proud of in terms of how we produce meat uh, on this farm and around this country. But what it's also led to is by bringing that livestock into the rotation, I've increased my yields in my cereals by about 34%. Now that is a win-win and one of those sweet spots where productivity improvements have been the same as improving my carbon footprint, getting me towards net zero. But I've not only been doing that, I've been looking elsewhere in the business. Uh, so when I look at my cereals, I've actually been looking at different yields. We're an organic farm as it happens. Uh, and one of the things I've been looking at is some very old varieties of wheat. And I'm bringing those into my rotation have significantly increased my yields as well because they're able to be better adapted to the organic system uh, and to the soils we've got here in Hertfordshire. So that's been uh, a great improvement. But what I'm also doing uh, is heavily investing uh, in new infrastructure. Uh, so we're putting up a new farmyard at the moment. We're gonna capture all of the water uh, that comes from that. We're gonna harvest all of the rainwater. And we hope that by doing that, we're gonna be able to use zero mains water in our agricultural operations. For me, water goes hand in hand with climate change and net zero, and we've got to be better and we've got to invest better in infrastructure to capture that water, to move that water, to store that water, because we're going to see more of it at certain times and less of it at other times. But at least we've got access to precious fresh water in this country, something that I think will be agriculture's competitive advantage 
uh, going forward. So in terms of our soils, what we have, uh, like most farms, is very variable soils, predominantly heavy North London clay, uh, but we've also got uh, some slightly lighter soils and we've got some very, very poor soils. So what have I done in those fields? I've actually turned those into permanent pasture for my livestock. What that's also done is locked up carbon, so I'm not ploughing those fields. I'm utilising those fields for what I believe is best use. You can't grow uh, a crop of wheat in them very well. We tried for 20 years and we're never ever successful maybe one year in in eight or nine but the reality is i can grow grass very well in those fields that grass can sequester carbon uh, we can store carbon in the soil which we're not going to release because it's permanent pasture and then we can feed that cellulose and that grass to our livestock producing uh, an economic outcome uh, from those areas way in advance of cereals that we grew on those parts of the farm so alongside uh, productivity improvements, which have a clear benefit in terms of our carbon footprint, we're also looking as agriculture to pursue other ambitions. We want to increase the farm storage of carbon uh, on farms like this and all around the country through nature-based solutions. Just look at the hedgerows around us. Look at the woodland that we're custodians on. Look at the permanent pasture. And I will come back to permanent pasture uh, later on in my talk. Uh, but those nature-based solutions are all about us acting as an even bigger sink of carbon than we are already, as well as maintaining the carbon that's already in the soils. And finally, we want to boost uh, production of land-based renewable energies, bioenergy, uh, which can be coupled with carbon capture and storage uh, and generate uh, a significant income, but also offset huge amounts of carbon elsewhere in the energy economy. And the last thing I want to highlight on my farm here uh, is how we're using uh, improvements in animal health and welfare. We're really keen. In this country, we've got some of the highest standards in the world when it comes to how we care for our animals, the health of our animals, the welfare of our animals. But I'm really keen we continue to push that, not only because it is the right thing and it's what society expects of us as farmers, but also because it improves the product productivity of those animals. So I use my vet not to fix uh, animals that are sick, but actually to proactively work with me to improve my genetics, to improve the health status of my animals and get them to grow faster and be more efficient, therefore contributing yet again to my aspiration to get to net zero and also at the same time hitting that sweet spot of improving my productivity and my economic performance. So moving away from uh, my own farm in Hertfordshire, what else is going on and what else do we need to see going on? Actually, that's probably a more important question. The first one for me, and I touched earlier a little bit about what we're doing in terms of water, as a nation, we have got to invest like never before in water infrastructure. We know at times of the year, we will have too little water. At other times of the year, we will have too much, but at least we'll have it. But we've got to capture it. We've got to move it. We've got to store it. And that needs investment and that needs serious infrastructure investment in water management. I really want to see this happen across the country. It's something that has to be a priority for government, for the industry, uh, for the water companies, for anyone who has an interest in how we use that most precious of natural resources. Secondly, I want to see more renewable energy. We're already seeing about 40% of farmers across the country uh, contributing in some way to renewables. I want to see that uh, increase. I want through the use of biomass uh, and through the use of uh, battery storage, something I think that I will be looking to bring in on this farm with some uh, PV uh, on the new yard. Um, we need to see more on renewables. But we've also got to help our businesses become even more productive. That relies on other infrastructure, such as broadband. In some parts of the country, it is atrocious. How can I improve my herd? How can I improve uh, my livestock, my genetics, my knowledge without access to broadband? It's absolutely critical. And a lot of the technology coming down the track, whether that be robots, whether that be uh, more targeted pest control, is going to rely on connectivity. And we've got to see much, much more of that across the rural community. The final area for me that I want to touch on is the issue of how we are carbon sinks.
So one of the things I see going forward is actually us helping other parts of the economy who don't have that ability to store carbon, to sequester carbon, to act as a carbon sink. These hedgerows, the woodland I've got on this farm. And we need to see active engagement in developing a marketplace around that and a value for that. It's something that actually farmers have been doing for generations, uh, but we've not realized the real value of it. And going forward, in terms of that net zero aspiration, I see those sinks and stores as really big positives for us. I also find uh, the food industry at the moment quite interesting. I think there is more interest uh, in this area. It is a reason uh, that actually people are asking more questions about the ethical standards something is produced to, the sustainability standards that something's produced to. And we as farmers in this country want to be absolutely at the forefront of getting to that net zero game. And we want our food industry and our supply chains to support us do that, not just doing it on farm here, but how how we all collectively across the food industry have that aspiration to get to that net zero point. So finally for me, I just want to uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I look forward to taking some questions later on in the, uh, in the event, um, but also just remind you that farmers are, they're not unique, uh, but we're almost unique, I believe, in not only being producers of greenhouse gases and contributors to climate change, something we are addressing uh, as we speak on thousands and thousands of farms across the country. But we're also able to store carbon, lock up carbon, uh, and actually, therefore, in my mind, very much be part of the solution to climate change, not just part of the contribution towards it. Thank you very much.